us by any means. But um, I don't know. I, you know, at least the heavy, the real heavy metal. You know, it's it, it's mostly for the younger kids uh, to begin with. So I can appreciate it for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to give I have to give them credit for not using a lot of synthetic music. You know, they got real drums, real guitars, and and uh, a lot of it is is flash and show, but. Uh, you know, you the younger kids, 13, 14, you know, teen, young teenagers, they like the firecrackers and the, the rockets going off, you know, and things, and I, that's what it's all about. So, yeah, you know, it's a big show, and uh, which is good for certain people. It, some of these guys are great players, you know. Yeah. It's just, I mean, there's uh, so many different styles of guitar playing, and you, as long as you're great at what you do, then other guitar players will respect you for that. Yeah, Even if it's not what you like to listen to. It. You know, I mean, a lot of these cats are just wonderful players, but it may not be my choice or somebody else's choice to listen to that type of stuff. A lot of them are really wonderful players. Have you heard any younger guys who have, like, identifiable signature type of uh, sounds that you can respect? Uh, I've heard a lot of guys that I like a whole lot. Of, I think all three of us pretty much love the way Stevie Ray Vaughan played guitar. You know, yeah. I think... He was such he's a not young, exactly a younger guy, but, but well, he's not either. Really. <laughs> I'm not a younger guy either. <laughs> I we're mean, all he's young. Not an older guy, meant what I meant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're. Uh, I love Stevie Ray's playing a whole lot. Uh, I like Robin Ford's playing a whole lot, but he's not really young either. He's been around a long time. He's just now starting. This to get Eric recognition. Johnson is. Uh, uh, isn't that who I'm talking? Yeah, about? yeah. He's a good yeah, guy. That, you know, he's got some of that metal thing. You know that he's, a lot of the classical. Got some Hendrix in him too. Yeah. Know? Yeah, but he's real good. He's a great know? player. And, um, Gary uh, Moore is a great player. Uh, you know, it's funny because I guess myself and a lot of us <coughs> listen more to older music than we do to newer music. Uh, but and I like Scott Henderson a whole lot. He was a jazz kind of fusionish player. Uh, but there's a ton of great guitar players out there. Anybody you'd like to point out? You pointed them all out, huh? <laughs> That's I didn't, who all I, I didn't, like. I didn't make a drop in the bucket, I'm sure. <laughs> this is getting back to our first question there. You talked about there being sort of a blues revival. When, you know, people, I, I guess, kind of want to get back to uh, the real music, you know, the stuff that's been around, that's been appreciated. And in that, in that sense, there's always been sort of a, 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 an audience waiting for the Allman Brothers to kind of come back and, and uh, you know, deliver the same stuff you guys always did. Uh, is that the feeling you basically had? That, you know, people were kind of waiting for the band to come back and uh, get, get back into the scene? Do you know exactly what he's uh, saying? Mm, I, I, I wasn't even in the band and I was waiting for it to come back. Yeah. I think yeah, uh, we were all waiting for that, that, that 80s to get over with. <laughs> yeah, I think it was more... Uh, well, the, the Allman Brothers fan base was there all the time. Mm -hmm. But music started turning around toward, like we were saying earlier, toward a blues-type revival. It was like a good excuse for the Allman Brothers to get back together, you know, because uh, a lot of bands had to kind of not perform or not record during a certain part of, of the 80s and stuff where music just wasn't conducive to that kind of band. So you just had to kind of idle for a while. You know, and also, it's, it's, we're talking about it's good for that thing to come back more than just be, so the Allman Brothers can play. Uh, but it's great to hear Michael Bolton on the radio or somebody like that, you know, or, or Robert Jeff, he or Jeff Healy and Robert Cray. And, you know, it's just good to hear that kind of music mm -hmm. uh, all the way around. I guess the timing was also opportune because, like, uh, although they're not quite as rootsy as you guys, but you had, like, the Doobie Brothers going back on the road mm -hmm. and actually still in Nashville performing. Yeah, a lot of bands were popping the seventies. Got together. And Leonard Skinner did that that tour. That kind of was a move in the right direction too, mm -hmm. you know, because they were a band from the South as well. Mm -hmm. Not a Southern band, but a band from the South. <laughs> Had to make the di yes. distinction. <laughs> yeah. See, I think when uh, when technology started booming, that it made musicians uh, and people in the industry want to utilize the technology. So it took. Ten years or so for people to realize that you didn't have to overdo it. You know, you can utilize it without, like, letting technology dictate to you what to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know, 
if technology dictates to music, then music suffers, I think, you know, yeah. so... Basically, it's back to where we're playing the instruments instead of vice versa. And now it's you like know. guitars and drums and B3 organs and pianos and all these things as opposed to uh, synthesizers that will make all these sounds and millions more. You can use all these things, you know, synthesizers are great if you don't let them take over the music, you know. But they don't, they don't, as far as we can tell, I, I guess you guys agree with this, I don't really see a whole lot of a place for synthesizers in the Allman Brothers. No, no. That kind of breaks the sacred trust. You the know place what, for them is you in know the what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They really in the back of the truck. <laughs> yeah. You used to scotch the semi, maybe. Yeah. The average Japanese fan tends to, uh, at the mention of Southern rock or bands from the South, tends to think of you know just that bands, you know, rather, as opposed to individual performers. I guess that's pretty much what it's all about: guys getting together, and you know, it, it's a, it's a solid unit. I suppose that's always been the, the situation, right? Well, the t the term Southern rock, I think, came about. Uh, you know, we didn't name them ourselves that. And it was the, the business called it that. Because uh, there were, in the 70s, there were a lot of bands that that were in that category. Marshall Tucker, uh, Leonard Skinner, um, Charlie Daniels, ZZ, uh, ZZ Top, Wet Willie, you know, all these Wet movies. Willie. Mm -hmm. So it was easy to say, you know, to put it in a category because it was definitely different from uh, California or New York uh, music. And, um, but really, uh, now that you know all this time has gone by, it's, it's it's almost it gets to be like an anchor around our foot, because uh, it tends to keep putting us in one area, in one little area, uh, and there's really not a great need for the term now because we're, we're probably the only southern rock quote band out there. Now. Um, you know, we keep trying to think of ourselves as a progressive rock and roll band. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Which is precisely blues. what the band really is. Yeah. You know, you don't see very many rebel flags and things. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't know. We never have played that thing up as much as a lot of the, the yeah. people that came yeah. after us. <laughs> you kind of have to play it down more than anything else because, yeah. like Dickie was saying, it tends to stereotype you when the Allman Brothers aren't really a band that deserves to be stereotyped, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. There are blues influences, <coughs> jazz influences, uh -huh. uh, folk, country, rock. I mean, there's there's tons of influences that make up this sound, but to uh, pinpoint it to a southern rock sound, because a lot of the southern rock that came later, and then especially toward the end of it, uh, is what people remember, and they don't remember what created that in the beginning, which was a, a beautiful fusion of sounds. Mm -hmm. Plus, the thing is, that, that term southern rock, didn't get boiling up until there were four or five bands from the South yeah, that were popular, yeah. you know, and then and then the brothers got drug into that that same thing, you know. And there are some really good, quote unquote, Southern rock bands. Skinner's Easy mm -hmm. Top, they're fine bands. They're different from this band. They, they they follow, I think, from what I can notice, is they follow a set format and play the songs the same way every night. And we're not about that, you know. We're we approach it more like, like Miles Davis band. would would approach it, you know. Hmm. Really? Come on, some Southern Look magazine is for aspiring guitar players. Uh, we'd like to get from you guys some pros of wisdom here, advice on how to uh, build up your chops and how to develop yourself into a good, good player. Don't play for speed's sake. Mm -hmm. Start start there. Mm -hmm. Play from you know, inside. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's enough speed, the, the right amount of speed will come in due time. That's what I'd say. Well, the best advice I th I th that I can give to younger people is, is it's fine to study your contemporaries or your favorites. Thank you. uh, but uh, find out where they're being influenced from and go back and, and come from the same place that your favorite players are coming from. You know, learn where they're learning. Uh, because they are obviously not copying each other. And uh, so go back and, uh, and, and ironically now, the, the Robert Johnson, this new package on Robert Johnson is one of the hottest selling things in America. Yeah. Over 200,000 Which is, uh, mm -hmm. when I went in the store to pick it up, there was an 18-year-old uh, 
kid that was trying to tell me how great it was, you know, and I, I looked and I said, yeah. Yes, I know. Yeah, I can't wait to hear it, you know. <laughs> I've studying it for years. But that's great. See, if, to go back to there, go back to the 30s, and, and find out where rock and roll and blues came from at the beginning. Um, it's a great school. You know, actually, we've had, with our...